Um, have a super yeah. Great day. yeah. Like, you know, oh God, flying in at 10 30 last night. I'm like, why did I agree to do this? Um, but no, this is good. This is the best way to start uh your day, right? I was awake anyways, right? Just getting back to normal is gonna take some couple of days. Okay, so let's warm you up. We've got our push day today. While I'm warming you up, I'm going to answer some questions that I have uh, received. Apparently, and I'm pretty sure I knew this a few weeks ago, the uh, video vault that I sent you, the link didn't work. So a lot of you still had a lot of questions, um, but couldn't answer, be answered, couldn't find answers because the link didn't work. So I re uh, sent the link, I think on True Coach a couple of weeks ago. And I also saw that Catherine reset the link on the questions. So um, hopefully some of those questions are being answered. The first question I'm getting is tempo with those three numbers. Um, remember to scroll slowly. Those three numbers are concentric movements, eccentric movements. I'll talk about that during warm-up. Let's start. So high knees. So what those three numbers are is your tempo. So the first number is your concentric. So for example, bicep curls, if we were to concentrically the earth exertion, Add a little plyometric is number one. It's a, just a one count up. In between the two numbers, the second number is placed in between the two movements. So this movement, the no movement. Okay, and typically that's one, right? Now double time it. But say, for example, if I had you keep moving, if I had you down for a squat, I would maybe hold you for a three count. That's where you would see a three in that second number. Now let's pick up your pace. For five, four, three, two, and time. Okay, let those heart rates come down. The last number is eccentric, the letting go phase. Right, that number is going to be usually the slowest. Please do things with no momentum ever, no dropping. So that last number is will be a two for the bicep curl. So one, one, say. Really don't have to lose too much sleep over it. Add a little plyometric. As long as you're doing things slowly. Now, sometimes you'll see a second list of numbers, right? I made the first ones, and that's because I'm adding an eccentric uh, or a negative. So the last number will be even slower, right? Super slow, some kind of three or five count, and that's really gonna help develop your strength, okay? Burn things out and do. Okay, now take a rest. Give yourself a big space. Walk out. Okay. Baby push up. Nothing too crazy. Um, uh, I'm going to do something new. This session, lots of new stuff in the session. Keep me on your toes. I'm going to actually do some negatives at the beginning of the set. So usually I have those at the end. This time, just to switch things up, I'll have a few at the beginning. So you might have to do more drop setting because that's going to really fatigue the muscle. Now, we'll do one more and then we'll start some mountain climbing. Uh, rest intervals. Quick, very, very quick. I mentioned this in the live the very first week. Is today for this session to add some mountain climbers, keep your highs. And neck and touch the spine, and then pick up your pace for five, four, three, two, one, and then come back out. Wow, my body feels fantastic. Keep those legs straight. Kick the dogs out of the bed uh, a week before we left, and then a week again with no dogs in the bed, and then we're back. That side, I'm coming down to the This is definitely improved. Meals is of course, worse. Oh my goodness, we're getting old together. And then pick up your pace for five, four, three, two, and one. Now take that right leg, drive your hip forward, and open it up into a nice big stretch here. So rest, rest intervals quick, right? A1, A2, transition quickly, very little rest. And because we're doing push pull supersets on the even weeks switch, you're going to hate me a lot. You're not going to be very happy at all uh, because I'll have you do two push movements rather than a push pull, 
which we're typically used to, with very little transitions in between those two letters, you're going to feel a great deal amount more fatigue probably. That's just, again, a nice new change and shock to your system. Okay. And switch. The dogs were so happy to see us. It's like, wow. Um, I don't think, well, Tempest has never been left that long uh, with the both of us. So that was a huge adjustment. I've never had the greeting ever if I did. Yes. Okay. So anyways, let's, let's stay focused here, Tish. So we're going to do half squats. Put your, if you have a plate, you're going to use it. I'm not going to use, I have the plates, but this floor is so slippery. I just don't, I don't trust it. So I'm just going to grab two dumbbells instead. And that will do essentially similar thing. I'm going to place the dumbbells quite close together. Okay, so we're not doing a sumo. We're doing more like a hack. Okay, show I take my slippers off. Um I don't want you doing like a sumo. It's kind of like a toe slightly pointing out. A lot of people this won't be different from where how you squat, right? It, feel, it has to feel natural for you. Some of you have to squat with a wider stance because of mobility issues. Some of you I think you just say jump, and that's how you should squat. But that, that doesn't feel natural to go wider. Totally fine, right? There's no rules. Um, there are rules, but not when it comes to this. Okay, so let's just make sure I know what I'm doing here. Three sets of three to 10. We are going to do, just like I was talking about the warm up, those three numbers. The last rep for the OGs, that's uh, original gangsters. I like Laura's definition way more than mine. Um, so the people that are ready to be challenged should start the OG movements. If you're not ready, then take it back a notch. This is why all ages and all levels can do these workouts because they A, give you options for newbies and originals. Also, I want you, I, I, I program for the strongest, fittest person in the group. You have to do that, right? If that strongest person that's been doing this for several years, or uh, isn't being challenged, she's gonna move on. So it will be up to the people who are gradually building up to where that person is to back off. How do we back off? We don't do negatives, we don't do the um, higher reps, we do the lower reps, we take a set out instead of doing two, I maybe do one set. We all, it's not the exercise that's creating the intensity, it's the other factors like reps, sets, negative training, drop sets, those sorts of things, right? Okay, so three sets of 10, then we're going to do that fun um, uh, uh, shoulder challenge. To show you how, even though I demoed it in the gym, it sounds like some of you are moving in back into the gym, but I wanted to demo what it looks like in a gym. So you're just going to anchor a band of some sort. A lot of you have even nicer, fancier bands than me, uh, which is awesome. Okay, so I'm going to just get this set up for this movement. I'll move it up so you can see it. Okay, so I'm, I've got everything ready. We're going 10 to 15, the last rep for the people who are ready to be challenged. We're going down. Let me just make sure I know. Down for three, hold for five, power up for one. And then we're going to go right into our shoulder movements. And I'll show you how you can do the shoulder movement without the cable machine, too. Okay, so I've got my heels on the plates. Grab whatever type of weight that's going to challenge you. There we go. For 10 to 15. I'm going to do no weight just because I haven't been squatting a ton. So the, rep, the count the tempo is down for two, hold for two, power up except for the last two. So it looks like this, down for two, hold for two, power up, don't. You can come up and squeeze the quads, right? Just don't hyperextend the back. So you're just really making sure there's no dropping into this. It's amazing how, even though we know we're not supposed to do it, we will do it because it's easier just to go ding, right? But it's really hard on the knees, plus your muscles aren't doing the work, right? Feels good. 
got my 10 to 12,000 steps in every day when I was away to balance off the extra calories and beverages that I had. And it's amazing what that does, right? Put the bikini on and still felt not too bad, okay? I have a funny story to tell you. I'll tell you once we're getting in the role of this. Okay, so that's, now I'm gonna do the negatives. Down for three, hold for five, four, three, two, good job ladies, and pop up. Okay, so now I'm going to use the bag for the second part of this. For the first part, I'm just going to hold down small dumbbells. I'll show you a couple options with bands as well. And we're just going to push up and down. Up, so feet shoulder width apart, pelvis tucked in, okay? Not doing any of this business. Move, ladies, let me just tell you the rep range that we're doing. Three to five of each movement. Obviously, the people who've been training with me longer than a few weeks, we'll do the higher volume. We're doing three movements, or sorry, two movements to the shoulders here. So pushing all those push muscles today. Last three, this is a great way to also break up workouts so you're not feeling such intensity in one area once a week, right? We're just breaking up the intensity and challenging your muscles twice a week, which is a nice change, especially if you've got some aches and pains going on. Okay, and the other thing you could do, if you don't wanna, oh, I'll, I'll demo that later. Well, I won't get ahead of myself. So now I'm just gonna make sure I feel tension between my legs, okay, before I start. So this, I feel nothing. So I'm gonna come here, slight bend in the knee. And it kind of gives me a bit of a wedgie. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. And that's just because uh, I'm a little further away from the bed. So the other thing you could do if you don't want to give yourself a wedgie is just hold the bag a little lower and come closer to it. Okay, so you might have to figure that out, see how it feels, right? So this is a, the, both of these are the front shoulder movements, okay? So your body, your shoulders are going to feel a good burn after this. Three. Two, I have to check the tempo. Um, I didn't write a tempo, or did I? No. Okay, so you just have to do the slow control. No negatives, nothing like that, I'll add. Okay, down, let's make sure that last one is the slowest one, right? That last rep is the one that's making the biggest changes, uh, unless you do this. Right, because you're tired, then you just really wasted that sweet spot of strength. Okay, so if that felt pretty good and you want to add some weight, go for it. The intensity should increase each round as long as your body is permitting it. So I think I'm gonna just, I'm gonna knock out and feel amazing, but I wanna to continue to feel amazing, right? So I'm just going, this is the first time I've done, actually I did do some squats in Mexico, which I felt pretty good too. Um, but I wanna maintain this feeling of where I'm feeling. So I just, I'm not gonna push myself, right? I'm putting the ego aside. Hey, Tish. Yeah, honey. I kind of, my left hip is really bothering me. And I, the squats are, even though I'm not lifting any weights for my squats, it still kind of hurts my left hip here. Um, and so it, it, do you think I should just do, what is it, the bridges instead? I just don't want to put weight. That's a, good, that's a great idea. These ones here. Yeah. Do you recommend that? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Put them to your hip. I think I I have no idea. Maybe I, I, I slept on the wrong way. It was like killing me from here. And then just wrapped around here, my left hip. And any squat, deadlift, or anything is just not, it's not feeling right. But it's getting better. I It got so bad I couldn't go to the washroom easily. 
but I just can't squat easily. I, I can't put a lot of weight on yeah. the left so, hip. Yeah, so I haven't been squatting for months um, just because of my sciatica and bio bulgy disc. Um, so you can't do anything that hurts it and deadlifts for sure don't do, right? Um, and uh, I would go, I would do hip thrusts. So I was dying, my, one of my therapists, I had, I had three of them, um, said, just do bridges until you get better. Cause it's still, it's a, and it's actually, a, um, he gave that to me as an exercise to get stronger. So yeah, do cool. them. And it's not gonna feel the same, but just keep the reps high and then you'll be fine. Cool, thank you. You're welcome. Make sure you take care of that. Because oh, I'm icing it like, oh, I have ice in my pants sometimes. <laughs> yeah, good, excellent. And your yoga will help you, etc. So just be smart. It's not easy feeling things when you're on a really good roll, unfortunately. I mean, it is what it is. I've been more empathetic to that stuff this year more than ever because most of you know I've really dealt with some terrible, terrible pain. So this is the option if you don't want to do the bands. Up and down. Hopefully you can see that with that glaring light. So here and down. Okay. So I just I put I put the band a little bit lower. Um this this is the red band is still very challenging, right? And I knew that and it's a tiny muscle. This is a tiny, tiny muscle. Um so it's not, it can't take much of a load, otherwise you'll hurt yourself. You just won't get the band up or you'll start doing this, right? So two, three, four. And if he's feeling already, it could either burn or five. You know you're having to switch around and continue to move. Five is probably good, right? Love this movement. And just as good with bands as it is with cable. Okay. Bands just are safer. Okay. More effective. We're going to use them until we're 95 versus dumbbells. You know, we might have to put those to bed at 85. We don't know. We will have to see. Each of us will feel different. Okay. This is five. And now I'm just going to. Really, really, really relax it. Okay. And then Mandy, keep moving. I'm just going to add that this four day split will be better for your body if you've got some little issues going than the three day splits. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna grab, I'm gonna grab my water. No, okay, maybe not. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so we're going to do one more round of that, ladies. Let's really push Ash. I know that negative. Good job. Amazing. Okay, love it. Um, why do we raise the uh, heels? Well, a lot of us raise the heels no matter what, just because of ankle mobility, right? So this really helps. It also keeps a nice straighter back. Um, it also isolates more of the body. Right, because it will keep you more upright. Um, just a little bit. It's not going to be like a big, big thing. But anytime your body is more upright, you're going to feel more of the quads, more of a forward hip flexion. You're going to feel more in the back leg. Although squats are compound movements, so you're so you're going to feel all of the muscles. So just as in going back to the rest intervals, a one, a two, very quick for transitions after you've done. The superset, then you can give yourself that minute to recover. I wouldn't want more than a minute to 90 seconds because I want you to start the third, second and third um, set feeling not ready. Perfect, Mandy. Yeah, good. And the way he taught me is think of coiling the vertebrae up one at a time. So kind of like her. Yeah, yeah, and then curling it down. And you might have, if it's too much on the lower back, then get rid of that. But that should take some pressure off um, your lower back. And I'm going to show you one other exercise that um, saved my life. 
save my sanity. I'll show that on the next uh, super set here. So I'm feeling it. I haven't been counting, but I just kind of feel tired. I'm going to make myself now and do that negative. Hold. Ash is doing maybe a few more. So I love it. Hold. Hold. See if you can get those legs parallel. Beautiful. And then pop up. Nice. Yes. That pop up is going to just be awful, but it's so good. Awful and so good at the same time. So mm -hmm. now we're going back. You won't be adding weight to this upper body movement, right? These are literally the front head of the shoulder. Tiny little muscle. So if you try to go too heavy, you're going to be shrugging. You're going to be hurting yourself. So we don't want any of that business. So right into it, even though we're still a little out of breath, we're going to get, so you have alternate options. Push up, really keep those knees bent, right? Support your lower back. Two, three, four, Five. Ooh, is a good burn. Flip over. Same thing. Right about lower back, a little rest. Five. So if your arms are bent, you're using towards bicep. Your arms have to be straight. Okay. So I find figured out sort of this is a pretty good stack or not. Giving myself a Luigi energy. Oh, one more. And then let the shoulders really feel a good burn at the end. Good job, ladies. Now, I wish I would have remembered my juice. Okay, we're, this workout's going to be quick because now we're doing punches. Okay, there are about punches from the side plank. Really easy setup for those. So the punches are going to be great for your triceps if you extend straight and squeeze. Obviously, the front part of the shoulder is also going to be doing the work and your chest. So good punching movement is good for the chest presses, all the push muscles. So we're going to do um, 10 to 15 of those per arm. So that's going to be, I'm going to grab my baby back. Okay, I'm going to grab the band with handles. Okay, and I can always go to, this is the baby band means my thinnest band is probably where it's probably like 20, maybe 10. It's going to be easy. But I just want to warm everything up first. Okay, so... In that left leg position, feeling nice and strong. Don't move your body like so, right? We're staying here, and then you're just punching. Oh, it's going to be way too easy, but whatever. Okay, it's not my workout. It's yours. Just make sure that the first few do feel like you're actually going to do something rather than just punching air. Okay, abs are strong. Use your abs. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to go up with my arm. Okay, if it arms above your arm, you can move your your arms out a little bit. Okay, that'll take a little less pressure. Uh, but I would say like it's only for one minute at least just a second. <laughs> but I knew this time to be a stop face to face training when um I was just to suck it up. I knew that it was time that I needed to, to stop. Uh because I was not being uh, I just didn't have the patience for right? just 25, 26, 27 years of it. It's, but to the point where I just did not have the same patience as I needed to have. I was never a mom, but never really built that patient gain into me very much. I know that as a mom, you have to be so patient. Three, now I'm feeling it. Two, just do high reps instead of going to grab a thicker bag. And one. Okay, and, and if you want to use your legs, you can actually bend your legs and then asymmetrically your legs are working, right? Okay, so now we're going to do those diamond push-ups. So diamond, heart to heart, or diamond. You're making a, a little diamond or heart. And you're just going to do five to eight per side. Okay, I'm going to copy Ashley's lead and get rid of the dumbbells. Okay, 
You can drop down to your knees at any time. Range of motion will also make this less. Your range of motion will also make this easier. So you can stack your feet or you can stagger them to make this easier. Okay, the front leg is in the back. That's a modification. Bending your knees is also a modification. This is really, bell's not good on the parts in it. So drop. Make sure your uh, hands, ankles, no, wrists, elbows, and shoulders are on the same plane. Baby push up. Okay, I want to work more of the triceps because I've had a boob job and I don't want to push my chest. Okay, so I'm just going to do a small concentric or an eccentric and then really come up and squeeze. And then you're going to flip over, maintain balance, then move. Okay, you can drop down to your knees as well. Squeeze the back a part of the arm. Hold, maintain balance, then drop. Okay, the slower you do this, the better. This is two per side. That is a three to five per side. You pick. The last two should be a challenge. Okay, drop. Protect your shoulders, ladies. Please don't let this hand way out here. Okay, right, take a bit of a breather. After you've done both of those supersets. First coming up. Oh yeah, the punches. So your shoulders are gonna be so tired after this. Now, um, I'm going to grab my thicker belly. Keep my thinner band around just in case. Keep moving legs, I'm not pushing you. Okay, this is perfect. Oh, well, that just broke, so we just throw that one away. Bands get old, they get unsafe, so be sure to make sure that your bands are getting too old, at least. Or you can buy these bands. These ones are safer. I don't have the old school bands. You have all the nice new fancy. This has that, but I hate these because they get in the way of moving. But maybe I'll use it for feels like a good time to just put it up a bit. I'll tumble back around. I want to keep the rest high here. Okay. Oh, that's perfect. And then nice strong core. Okay. Keep going. And then keep your abs strong. Okay, just so you aren't pulling through all of your lower back. Squeeze your abs. Strength training abs are involved in every force or sorry, strength movement you make. As long as you focus on keeping those muscles strong. Three rounds of this, geez. That's gonna be a tougher. The last super set is gonna be super quick and only two rounds, so that's good. And then, okay, I'm just feeling really lazy, like I don't wanna do anything more. Um, I'm gonna grab my mouth, because that was, didn't feel it. You're probably, your breath range will probably go down, ladies, because I'm really pushing your upper body here, right? Yeah, no rest, touch. thank you for reminding me. Drop a little bit, everything stacks, nothing like this. And then squeeze those triceps. Drop. So the heart goes to the heart, the hand heart goes to your body heart, okay? A lot harder movement than the traditional push up. Feels good to move your body, okay? When you've been first thing in the morning like this, it's so good. Sometimes I do my strength training after, in the afternoon, because I get kind of lazy and 
sit down, do check-ins, have a cup of coffee. Then Neil's kind of getting antsy. Now we get a rest to get the dogs out. Sometimes I'll get my list in for two or three, and I can really feel how much lower my energy is than even just a few hours later. This just sets the tone. You can get a first morning workout in. I know, Maddie, it's not morning for you, for you, but uh, it really just said this for so many years. It really sets the tone for the rest of your day. You're going to get it up, you know, move, use your muscles. Why on earth would you be an idiot with nutrition, right? And all of this, the daily movement has to meet if you're going to do that, right? Plus, it's done. Right, the naggy voice. You gotta get that strength workout in. You get, if you don't do it first thing in the morning, you know, it's not easy. Schedules, children, all that, right? Sometimes it's just not doable. You can't do it in the morning, but I'm sure I'm grateful that I can put it in the morning. Okay, one more round, ladies. The rain, rep range is going to be perhaps a little lower. All I ask is that you make the last few a challenge. Don't worry so much about the number. Those rep numbers are just there to guide you, right? So don't stop at 12 if you can do 15 just because there's a magic number of 12 written there for you, right? You do 15. And then maybe you write a note which band you use, what dumbbells you use, we're able to do higher volumes. So then when I say refer to whatever the day is, when we repeat that movement, you'll look at how strong you've gotten over the month or so. As long as you're consistent, you'll get there. You're doing the best you can, but you're not as consistent as you want to keep going, right? Every time you make a decision to pay some time in this strength training room, your gym, wherever you want to call it, the closer you are to a longer, up your pain-free life. Then you know, as you get older, these are priorities for yourself, right? I'm almost 50. And I wanna, I'm really paying attention to what, especially on the holiday, how people move, right? Just walk. Really tells a lot about people. Getting off their chair, getting off the floor after they stretch. I mean, I look like I, I feel like I look like a bit of an 80-year-old right now. Right? And you're more mindful of just how you move. As you get older, right? They say that the speed of your walk determines your age. You know what? And I never really was, you know, I never read that, but it completely makes sense, right? So that's why when Neil's 100 yards ahead of me, I really try hard to keep up with him uh, because I know that my age is I'm eight years younger, six years younger, older than him. I know that he is moving faster. And I'm moving slower probably because of that. So maybe it's a blessing that I married a younger man. It's gonna keep me young, hopefully. Right now he sure does. Okay, remember you can definitely modify this. Drop down to your knees. You can keep your knees bent to the whole thing, right? These modifications are not to make you feel bad. I want you to be able to do the movements properly through proper modifications, right? As long as it's a challenge for you, that's all that matters. Now, please do not allow your shoulder blades to drop in like this. None of you are doing that. Um, well, you two are doing it. Um, but I see that a lot, right? They'll drop their blades into it rather than bend at the elbow. Again, this just makes it easier, and that's why you do it. Now, you don't need a bow suit for this. Obviously, very few of us will have access to a bow suit, but you can definitely do this exercise and make it challenging enough without a bow suit. You can use a step, right? Or you just bend your knees and go slower. Bow suit adds some ankle and work, knee work. Obviously, with more instability, your core has to work harder, but it's still great. So, we're going to do Tricep forward back lunge, tricep, I didn't put a tempo in there, but I'll just kind of walk you through the tempo. And then we're going to do the jumps or steps. 
With the old G's, if you're feeling good, I want you to hold doubles in your hands for those. So this is different. I'm going to do no, no uh, bow sweep for the first round. You know, pretty small weight here. Triceps have already been worked a lot. Um, so I'm going to start with a 10, go from there. And we're going to do, I think, 10 per leg. Let me just double check. Yeah. 10 per arm. So that's five per leg, right? No. Yeah, that's what it is. I had to think about that for a second. So if you're on a BOSU, foot is in the sweet spot of your BOSU. Otherwise, you will not, you will not find a balance. And you're just going to go step in, small bend, step over, come down, extend. You can always take a step in the middle, right? Once you're down, tricep extension, okay? So 10 per arm, which means five of these per leg. Well, I could have been a lot leaner, but okay. Know how tired these muscles are gonna be by the end of the workout. So there's five without a rest and just switching legs. Okay, forward, right over top. Okay, I want nice straight knee patterns over, whoa, over. This is two, I'm just counting five per leg. So I don't want this little laziness, right? Really bring this knee in and place it down. Bring it in, place it down. This is five. Woo, triceps. And then if you don't have a BOSU to do your jump on and step off or whatever, we're just using your legs here. So we haven't used them yet, except for the beginning. Times 10. Oh geez, you're feeling good. I want you to hold dumbbells in your hand, not one. Hold both. Man, you don't do this, okay? Just do step ups on your BOSU. Don't do any of that today. Yeah, that works, as long as it doesn't hurt. Yeah, good. Now this just got a bit of an issue and lower back. So I just don't want her to do any impact. So if you don't have any BOSU, you can just do plyos here, okay? 10 of these, or pulses. If we're just using your legs, right? Again, you just figure out what works for you and your body, um, you're moving. That's all that matters. Your muscles are working. Your you know, clients used to get so mad. Oh, I don't I look like you when I do this. Well, let's hope you don't look as good as me. This is what I do for a living, but only been doing it for years and years and years. You have done it for six months. So, um, I wouldn't be good at your as good at your job because you are not going to be good at, as good at mine, right? Um, I don't look as good as I used to, right? Okay, so I'm going to show the next round with both two. And I'm you know, a little nervous because the floor is so slippery. Um, I like the both two for strengthening joints, right? Just by standing on this. You're doing bicep curls, those joints have to work harder, right? So there's many benefits to the BOSU. It's just not required, obviously. Okay, so foot's right in the sweet spot. I should grab the dumbbell. That was certainly hard enough with 10 pounds in my hand, okay? So right over top. You can do a little step in the middle, establish balance, right? You're gonna look sloppy, we're tired. This is totally fine. We as women are very hard on ourselves. I had one client that when she didn't do things perfectly, she just gets so angry and frustrated with herself. That's not the energy we're looking for, ladies. Right? Patience. You gotta be patient with your body and your abilities and your improvements. This is really good for my left ankle. I got something weird because I think it's all related to the sciatic, actually. And I can really feel the legs will work harder than those two. There's no question. This feels way harder. That was more like eight, but that's okay. So maybe you do the program for a couple of months, a couple of 
near the end, and you want to intensify workouts, and then vaccine of the bull suit could be something. But don't go out and buy it every single once. But if you hate it, and you have like a hundred and fifty dollar piece of equipment that you're going to be staring at and just feeling bad that you didn't use it, so take your time in purchasing and building your gym. Okay. I am getting a good slap along the time. I'm not going to jump on the bullshit either. Many reasons. Here we go. I can't believe how good I feel. I just, it's amazing. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. Wow. Okay. I will say though that if I miss even one day of stretching, I forget it. Cannot. This is just my new life. Stretching every single day. Which is what I expect. And if I don't, and I cannot do a workout because of it, that's my fault. It's not me. No one else's fault. Especially when I know what makes me feel better. Okay, okay. Quickly, I just want to show you one thing. If you are struggling with lower back, as a few of us are, this is some a movement that I was taught uh, last year, and it will temporarily uh, take some of your pain away. And I say temporarily because uh, sometimes the pain does. Some people do this, and after one time, they feel uh, way better. Some of, like for me, five to two days a week, three times a week, day, um, I feel very little back pain. So you're going to put your hand in that little high press area of your bum. Sort of where people get that naggy numbness. You don't have to do this with me. Like you can try it on your own. And then you're gonna drop your knee onto the ground, relax your head, and then you're gonna extend behind you, point the toe down, flex your foot. Okay, so foot's flex. And your toes pointing down, and I can't really see it very well. Keep pushing your thumb into that lower, upper glute, lower back area. Squeeze and repeat. Down and squeeze. Squeeze your bum. Squeeze your, your the thumb into it. And sometimes when I do this, I feel my lower back, uh, all that um, tension just kind of crackle out. Um, some of these little funny, and this is good for your bum too, right? So good to do at the beginning of your workout, after you're warm, of course. So once you've done about 10 of these, now I just want you to keep pushing, extend your leg straight, squeeze your quad, point your toe down, Ash. Yes, and then kick it back a little bit more. And three, we're gonna keep holding. Two, and time. Woo. So you'll feel, this muscle take the load. And what's happening when your muscles when your muscles aren't firing the way they should, because there is a bit of an impact or injury there, the lower back will take every all of it. So when you're squatting you have an injury, that's where the tension is going to go. So we need to fix the problem before we let you squat again, right? And so this movement forces your glutes to fire, it takes all that pressure off your lower back. And then push. So Catch the knee, and I only do it once per side, okay? Maybe I'll take a video of my new sort of sciatic uh, slipped disc routine that I do. It might help a few of you. Um, they say what, like 75% of people have a slipped disc. It's just not painful or doesn't bug you as much uh, as someone who has a nerve that's exposed. So with sciatica, it's just what's happened. We're gonna do one more, and then you're gonna squeeze and hold for as long as you can. When I first started doing this, I could only squeeze and hold for three seconds. I just couldn't do it. My lower back couldn't handle it. So now look at how much better I'm getting. And like big celebration, Tish. Ooh, I can hold this for 10 seconds. Like, oh, whatever. I take any celebrations I can get at this point, right? This is a huge thing for me. I could not hold this for more than three seconds. It just was too hard on my body. 
So yeah, so basically what happens is most of us have a little bit of a disc that's moved, right? This is normal, especially if we put challenges onto our body. The pain comes through when nerves become exposed through. So obviously this can be more slipped. So what's happened is that there's a nerve there that's kind of just hanging out, shouldn't be there, should be inside, tucked, and they're touching things, right? It is the work, nerve pain is the worst thing you'll ever experience. I've never had, like Neil had it. Um, you have to really make sure that you're being proactive or preventive to make sure that you're uh, doing these types of movements and doing these types of movements will then also create more strength in the entire body. Um, okay, ladies, good job. Thank you so much for your patience this week. I literally was sitting in the waiting room trying to figure out how I was gonna do the live. There's just too many people, too many dedicated people in Mexico. Gotta love it. Okay, so um, I'll see you in the, on the Facebook page and we'll see you next Tuesday, regular time. Take care of your back, honey. Thanks, Tish. Bye. My pleasure.